Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine today. Emmett and I thought that we would read you a story, and I'm hoping that we'll read you lots of stories over the coming days. This morning, we're starting with one of Emmett's favorites. This one's called Coyote, a trickster tale from the American Southwest by Gerald McDermott. Yeah. Well, Gerald. Gerald, the guy. Okay, yeah. So, coyote stories are the most widely known and most often told trickster tales of Native American <laughs> tradition. From the Great Basin to the Plains to the Pueblos of the Southwest, coyotes' misadventures have delighted and instructed for many centuries. While I'm reading, I want you to think about the parts that you enjoy and maybe some things that you can learn from coyote. And maybe some things from this one. Yeah, well, maybe we'll read that one another time, okay? Coyote. Blue Coyote. I want to see it. He was going along, following his nose, <clears throat> and he had a nose for trouble. Ah! That's a bad nose. Coyote stuck his nose in a badger hole, and but it got bitten. Coyote wanted to have a flaming red head like a woodpecker, but his hair caught on fire. Oh no! Coyote went looking for a snake, but only found trouble. Coyote was always in trouble. Uh -huh. Coyote came to a place where earth meets sky. He heard laughing and singing. He went up to take a look. What was it? Coyote saw a flock of crows. Yeah. They were chanting. They were dancing. Caw! 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 Ah. Calm yourself. Then the birds spread their wings. They flew through the air and circled the canyon. Look at Coyote's face. He's in. I want Oh, to... if only I could fly, said Coyote. I would be the greatest coyote in all the world. Yeah. What do you think's going to happen? He's going to Is this going to go well for Coyote, do you think? Mm -hmm. Coyote called to the crows. Let me join you, he said. Oh, this foolish coyote wants to be like us, Old Man Crow said to his flock. Let's have some fun with him. Old Man Crow turned one eye towards Coyote. You may dance with us, he said. Thank you, thank you, said Coyote, but I want to fly too. Maybe you can, said Old Man Crow. Uh, why? I don't know. Do you mean why does Coyote want to fly? Um, because he wants to be a bird. Hmm. Old Man Crow plucked a feather from his left wing. He told the flock to do the same. They stuck the feathers in Coyote. Coyote winced. His nose twitched. What do you think it means to wince? Uh, he says, ouch, ouch, ouch. Hmm, maybe. The crows chuckled. You are ready to fly, said Old Man Crow. The birds began their slow, steady chant. Caw! 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 They hopped from one foot to the other. Coyote joined in the dance. Even though he got out of step and sang out of tune, he was very proud of himself. That what I say to you sometimes. The crows spread their wings and soared into the sky. Coyote followed. His flight was jerky. He tilted to one side. Since his feathers were only from the left wing of each bird, he was off balance. Oh, no. He fell to the ground. Wait, he cried out. Don't leave me behind. He, he. The birds returned and gathered round Coyote. We must balance him, said Old Man Crow. I can't see. Hang on a minute. Old Man Crow plucked a feather from his right wing. 
Each time, each of his flock did the same. Coyote cringed as they stuck the feathers in his fur. The crows cackled. Ha, ha, ha. Now I'm perfect, said Coyote. I can fly as well as the rest of you. Coyote had become rude and boastful. Coyote danced out of step. He sang off key. The crows were not having fun. Why were the crows not having fun? Because Coyote was being boastful. Do you know what that means? Um, selfish? Kind of, like a bad sport. The birds again began their slow, steady chant. Coyote hopped along, flapping his feathered legs and singing sour notes. The dancers spread their wings and leapt into the air. Soon the crows were flying high over the canyon. Coyote struggled to keep up. Carry me, he demanded. Carry me. The crows circled Coyote, but they did not carry him. Instead, they took back their feathers, one by one. Coyote sank through the air. He fell straight down. Why did the crows need... Ooh. He howled. Coyote fell so fast his tail caught on fire. He fell into a pool on the mesa. Coyote crawled out of the water. He heard laughter and saw the crows flying away. Coyote ran after them. He tripped and fell, tumbling in the dirt. He, he tried to catch up. Coyote went home soaked and covered with dust. To this day, he is the color of dust. To this day, his tail is a burnt black tip. To this day, Coyote still follows his nose. He has a nose for trouble, and he always finds it. Uh, what did you think of that story? We like that one a lot. Emmett has never lived in the West, but before he was born, my wife and I lived out in Las Vegas, and we saw mesas out there. This is a mesa here. How do you think a mesa is different from a mountain uh, or a hill? Is it why um, we can't climb it? Mm, that's a good speculation. Have any of you seen coyotes around? We get them out here in Brookdendale every now and then. It's really fun to hear them at night howling. Just like that. Have a great day. We'll be back with more books soon. I hope we have some special guests also. Uh, I want to show them how we do this. We can show them the nature activity book another day, okay? Oh. All right. Can you say bye? <laughs>